Uh, I've done a lot of science fiction. You know, my career started at Star Trek, and I was a Star Trek fan as a kid. And I've never really thought of myself primarily as a science fiction writer. I'm just a writer, and this was the genre that I, I worked in and, and really enjoyed. And those projects tend to keep coming to me. But I've done period pieces. I did Carnival for HBO, and you know, I, 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 my love is history and politics outside of science fiction. Um, medical things weren't really in my cup of tea before now. Uh, what I responded to strongly in the material was, again, the writing was very strong, the characters were interesting, and the setting was was different. You know, we, I've seen various rip-offs of The Thing down through the years. Uh, I've seen various permutations of, of Alien. Uh, I hadn't seen this particular take on the genre, and this, this seemed interesting to me. There is a bit of science fiction in it, but it wasn't predominant in sort of what the story was about, and I thought that there was just something here that could I could see grabbing an audience with. Uh, the script came to me from uh, Sony Television as part of my overall deal from a writer named Cameron Porsande, and uh, he did a great job. It was his first pilot, which was sort of an astonishing thing for, for him to do, and I just was immediately drawn into uh, the, the script just from page one. So then I sat down and read the script, and I was taken with it. I mean, I, I had no desire to like it. And as I started turning the pages, I just kept wanting to turn the next page. And before you knew it, I had read the whole script. And I was really sort of taken with the fact that it had engaged me, someone who, does, who had a predisposition not to like the material. And uh, the characters just kind of were alive. It was an interesting concept. It was treating the world of uh, medical research very realistically. Uh, the thriller component was built in, but it wasn't overplayed. It was just a good piece of writing. And I could sort of see that there was a great potential here for a series. So then I called back and said, OK, actually, I'm in. Let's, let's talk about how to develop this uh, for, for television. Well, the first season is going to be very intensively focused on this research facility and what's happening there. Uh, the, the format that we're taking is that every episode is a day. So it's really 13 days in the life of this, of this lab, which just increases the tension and the pressure as people get more tired and lack of sleep. And the, you know, the walls seem to be closing in on them. And there's, it becomes a real you know, a crucible in terms of the revelation of character. So the things that you've seen that are set up in the pilot, the different character relationships, the different problems, and ultimately the stakes, just increase. You know, we just keep turning up the heat all the way through the first 13 until finally it's like you get to the, the season finale. There's a team that's brought in from the outset from CDC, uh, Center for D Disease Control in Atlanta. And then there's the people that are already on the ground in the lab. The people from the outside, from CDC, are coming into what they think is a fairly straightforward problem. You know, there's been a, a, an accidental outbreak of some virus within this lab. Uh, they have to quarantine some people, and they want to get to the heart of what this virus is about. What they discover bit by bit is there's a lot more going on here than they were initially told. And then the quick, very quickly, because the, they are also caught up in the outbreak, they can't leave either. So suddenly, you've got these two groups of people that are like jammed together in an in a, in a unusual circumstance. But one side has a lot of secrets, and the other side is there to ferret them out. Area 32 is chosen specifically because it's sort of outside the legal reach of, of any of the, the national governments. And so this lab was set up in a way to sort of put it beyond the law in a lot of ways, which makes it sort of a lawless situation. And people that work there are drawn from many different countries. So this is really nobody's responsibility and then everybody's responsibility because what's unleashed in this lab could have profound impacts for the rest of the world or it could save the rest of the world. I mean, one of the interesting things that our team discovers is that the research that's underway in this lab uh, has the potential to change the nature of humanity itself. It could be a, an enormous change in sort of how we look at ourselves and how we live our lives, but it also has the potential to wipe us out. So it's really one of these sort of you know, very delicate things. They, they have their hands around this, this enormous p potential, and they have their hands around this enormous catastrophe. And that's, that's sort of the struggle throughout the show. I think the tone of the show will be, it will be taut, but I think it'll be leavened with humor throughout. I think that, you know, people in extraordinary circumstances tend to want ways to relieve the tension among each other. And I think they're always 
uh, in something like this, there's lines of competitiveness that, that form when people in certain teams are, are sort of eyeing the other team and we're better than them or we're smarter than them or we don't want those guys from the outside to come in here and save our bacon. We can do this on our own. And the guys from the outside are like, these morons got themselves into this trouble, you know, but we're here to save them. So I think you've got that sort of natural competitive quality to it. And then you've got how people just behave under pressure. You know, people that you thought would be steadfast and would be there, you know, in, no matter what happened, turn out to be the weakest links, and the people that you thought would never, you know, be able to stand up to it are the ones that are actually come to the fore. So I think it's always interesting to see how character plays out in, in something like this. My job is to sort of supervise the process and keep the sort of the overview and sort of, you know, to look over the whole production and say, okay, you might want to look over here and be wary of that. And, you know, my experience tells me that this might be a problem. And also primarily to sort of look through the stories and say, well, let's tweak this character or I think we were missing a beat here or that's great, do more in that direction. It's, I'm someone who's slightly outside the process and gives me the ability to sort of have fresh eyes to things that sometimes get lost in the day-to-day -day struggle in the writer's room. Oh, I know very little about the biology and the medical background that goes into the show, nor do I think that I, sh I could do the research necessary to do it. My focus is on the characters and on the story, and I trust that there are writers on the staff and consultants on the, uh, who know a lot more about this than I do. What I try to do is, it has to ring true to me. You know, when I see it or hear it, there has to be a feeling of authenticity to it. There has to be something that I, I don't feel like they're just making that up in order to, to get through the plot point. And so in that way, hopefully, I'm sort of like the audience's ear as well, that if, if it rings false to me, I know it's going to ring false probably to the, to the audience.